Well, hello there, guys, and welcome to the stream. We're going to be getting started here very, very, very soon um, with our actual uh, stream here for Mare Nostrum. Uh, let's go ahead and get rid of the live soon thing here, and we can take a look at the initial stream. And hello, Fornos Ternopia. It's good to see you. Uh, Ternopia is... Uh, Muso uh, is actually the uh, creator of the game. I believe it's is that Dani Lopez. We have to see. Uh, thank you for stopping by, Ternopia guys. We really appreciate it. Can't wait to jump in here uh, and play some Mari Nostrum with all of you guys. So we're probably going to go ahead and get started a little bit early. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Damian Narushima uh, for allowing us or, or purchasing this particular stream for us. Uh, he really wanted to see it, and I know a lot of you other guys also wanted to see some Mari Nostrum gameplay. I think you made the right choice. Let's jump in and have some fun, guys. So let me just get started here. We're still a few minutes behind our actual stream time. Uh, I just want to make sure I've got you guys moved over here to the right side so that I can play the game and watch you guys at the same time. So I guess I want to go ahead and uh, just give people a few more minutes to get here. So let's give people about two, three minutes, and we'll get started right on the dot. Uh, and then we will move forward, although we might go ahead and start a couple minutes early. We'll see. Oh, well, that figures. <laughs> okay, guys, we're going to jump in. Um, so a few things I want to go over, first of all, is just the initial game presentation. Um, we've got some historical battles here, and we are going to go through all of the historical wars, basically sort of um, battles um, that make up part of, I want to say, a rudimentary campaign system. I don't want to say a fully-fledged campaign system. Because, for instance, if you beat a Lalia, then you unlock Kume, you unlock Katana. So it is a little campaign-like, um, certainly. Um, and, of course, there are other factions. So we can take a look here. We've got a Greco-Persian War um, group here. We've got the Peloponnesian War. We've got the War of the Diadochi, of course. And the First Punic War, um, Second Punic War, Syrian War. I mean, there are so many different choices here. Pirate cleansing, Roman civil wars. Uh, just a tremendous amount of historical wars, and all of these particular wars have battles within them that you can play as either side and try to, of course, change the course of history. Um, there's also a multiplayer aspect to the game, which, as you guys could probably imagine, in a game like this is going to be very important uh, to sort of generate an online presence and get people to test out their methods. Um, and, of course, there's a skirmish mode where you can go ahead, choose a faction of your size, and create your own battle here. You can even set the win position, which I really like, or you could turn wind off almost entirely. Uh, now, we're going to jump in here um, and do some historical battles uh, and have some fun. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look. So, Byron asked if we could do a short tutorial before jumping into the historical battles. Uh, we could do a short tutorial. So... We'll do it. We'll go ahead and do a few minutes of the tutorial. Um, so, Prefect Cassius, the wind dies down. The goddess Fortuna smiles upon us. Those stinking pirates will no longer be able to use the sails of their tremiolus to escape. Now we can reach them. Select Prefect, Ca Prefect Cassius Command Tremem and give orders to advance four squares. The rest of the Roman ships are at his command and will be following him. You can activate the display of the command lines by pressing the menu button twice. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just move these guys as they said, four squares forward. But actually what we should have done is move the commander forward. So if you guys saw there, I'm selecting just a single ship um, over here. But we can actually go ahead and grab the commander ship and order the entire group to move forward. Um, I actually was one of the people that worked on the tutorial for the game. So um, not, this, not this tutorial, I should say our video tutorial. Um, on Slytherin. So I know a little bit, but of course I could always learn more. Um, 
And basically, I can sort of walk you through this uh, or give you guys a, a basic tutorial myself without going through the entire tutorial phase. Um, so let's try that. First of all, um, let's go back. I already have an idea for a, a mission I'd like to go ahead and get started on. And let me go ahead and get to the historical missions. Alright guys, we are going to be playing My Lai. My, Li My Lai is a massacre in Vietnam. We're not going to be playing that. Of course, how could we not take the mighty Romans? Um, so a few things that you wanted to keep in mind here. Um, if you take a look here at these units with the flags on top of them, if we actually just get a nice look there, these units are basically the commanders of these groups. So we could actually go ahead and move forward all at once, basically like this, and everybody's going to follow us. At the same time, we could also change the stance we're going for. So for now, we're going for a grappling stance. The way that basically works is you get close to an enemy ship, you're throwing over hooks to try to grapple and hold on to the enemy ship, and your men are going to jump on that ship and hopefully capture it. We could also do ramming. And the way ramming works, of course, is you slam into the side of the enemy ship um, and hopefully succeed in actually sinking it. Now, a few things can occur when you ram an enemy ship, and one of those things is you can get fouled up. And what happens when you get fouled up is basically... Thank you, Musa. Let's do that. So I'm going to try to actually lower the volume with the volume mixer, uh, but I think we need to turn off the game volume because I don't think that's going to change much. But let me know if it does. Um, we might just have to turn off the game volume temporarily. Um, so as you can see here, we're going to go ahead and move forward with this group. And basically, I've got the ramming maneuver ready. I'm, I don't expect to ram any of these ships yet, but it's something that we could consider. And we'll have these guys grapple. And we'll have these guys... I guess we could also also have them grapple uh, moving forward. And we can take a look here at the Carthaginians. Um, they're quite ready to fight us, and I'm hoping that we can get a victory against them. There's any number of ways to, um, to sort of take the advantage here. Now, one thing I was going to mention is getting fouled up uh, basically means that... Um, sorry about that. Basically means that the front of your ship is trapped underneath the hull of a sinking ship and something that happened quite frequently in this time period so even if you get a nice strike on an enemy ship you manage to topple it over and you've got no casualties on board your ship could have just uh, purchased itself an early early uh, grave so we're going to go ahead and get started here and of course down here you can actually fast forward so if you want to fast forward you can just go ahead and hit this uh, go a little faster go a little faster even here and of course um, you just get really close use the middle mouse button to sort of change your trajectory when you're looking at the screen here uh, or if you're like me you sort of like the, the more bird's eye view style and you get, like to kind of zoom out a bit now you've got to be aware that the enemy is also going to be trying to take your ships out and there's any number of ways in which our ships could come into contact one thing that's very important is that if we smash into the front of the enemy ship here with a ram, nothing's going to happen in terms of the ship sinking. Now, what will happen is we'll rake oars. And what that means is both of our ships will run next to each other and basically try to just crash into the side of the enemy ship. And one of the enemy ships, or sometimes both, um, both the friendly and the enemy ship are going to have broken oars and they're going to be unable to move out of the hex in which their oars have been broken. This can be quite uh, difficult. Um, so we're going to go ahead. I'm going to move forward. And yes, uh, absolutely, like Quadriga, somebody mentioned. So these are this game is made by the same creators um, as those that made Quadriga. Um, and uh, probably one of my favorite games in the world is Quadriga. It's just hilarious. It's probably one of the funniest, um, most entertaining strategy games I've ever played. You know, even people that are not fans of strategy have gotten into Quadriga. But Mari Nostrum here is uh, a little bit uh, different in the sense that this is a very... Uh, niche, niche game. Um, you know, this is all about naval battles from the ancient time period, and there's not a lot known about these naval battles. We know a certain amount from, you know, from chronicles and things like this, but, you know, there's a lot of uh, room for speculation here. I also want to share with you guys that this battle is actually quite small. Uh, there are bigger and bigger and bigger battles. Uh, they just get massive, and really, they try to show you the amount of 
of sort of navy or, or ships around uh, at, at this time during a battle uh, ready for combat. So we're going to go ahead and continue forward. I'm going to ram with these guys. I'm ramming with these guys, and I'm going to grapple with these guys. Let's go forward. Come on, boys. Now, eventually, our men are going to start firing arrows at the enemy, and at that point, the battle is on. Um, there's a lot more that needs to be explained, but we're going to keep on moving. Hey, how's you going, Wavel? Good to see you, man. Okay, so we are approaching. Now, there is one thing we could do to actually approach faster. Um, we can't use sails, and there's a few reasons for that. Can anybody guess why um, in these battles you can't, or you generally don't, I don't want to say can't, but you generally don't use sails in these ancient naval battles? Does anybody know the answer to that question? I'm curious, because I, I actually didn't know the answer, um, but a good friend here at Slytherin did sort of explain it to me. Looks like you might ram one of them broadside. I'm hoping, I'm hoping we can. And there we go. The arrows have begun. So you can see already, um, this this represents, uh, it's on, on board, represent the amount of enemy soldiers here. Yes, that's correct, PGT Beauregard. That's a good question. Is there Archimedes fire? Uh, I'm not sure. Um, I do believe the devs are watching the stream. They might be able to give you the answer to that question. I I'm honestly not sure. Uh, so sorry about that, guys. Um, and that might be not be the first time the game uh, crashes. You know, remember, this is still before release. Um, so we're going to have a few issues here and there. Let's go ahead and do ramming this way. And we're going to basically just go ahead and do exactly what we were doing before. Exactly, Pixel. But really, um, PGT Beauregard got it perfectly. So masks were removed before the battle. And what that really means is that the slaves which are operating uh, these oars, they're going to have to row all the way back home. Now, in a battle like this where you're fairly close to land, that's probably not so bad. Um, but those slaves obviously had a ton of work to do. Uh, but yes, those masks were removed, cut down before the battle. They didn't want the wind un unnecessarily affecting the battle or sending their ships off to a place they never asked them to go. Um, so, of course, the masks were sliced right off. All right, we're getting closer and closer to the enemy. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward here a bit. Um, and I am going to try to slam into the enemy's side. Now, you've got to be very careful here. So, I'm going to show you guys a possibility. If you see here, there's a green line. This dictates sort of how far we're going. Now, occasionally, not right now, but occasionally what happens is you can actually extend that green line. It'll become an orange line and then a red line. And essentially what it means is that your guys are getting fatigued. They're getting too easily fatigued moving forward, but you are going to cover more ground or more water in this case. Let's move forward with these guys with the grapple and let's hope we catch someone um, unprepared. Uh, how is damage modeled via the numbers or are there visual hints as well? There is, There are definitely visual hints as well. Um, one of the ways damage is modeled is the amount of men on board. So each of these tiny chits on top represents a man on board. When you have no more men on board, all an enemy ship has to do is sidle up alongside you, take over your ship, and it's theirs. Um, another way damage is modeled is if you slam into the side of a ship, that ship will begin to sink. Um, if you hit it hard enough, you know, etc. If everything goes well, then that ship will begin to sink. I'm thinking right here the enemy is getting prepared for one of our ramming maneuvers. So we might have to go ahead and do grappling. And we're actually showing the enemy our side. So we may be the ones to suffer in this battle. Uh, here we go. All right. Thank you, Dave. Okay, so you can also move ships individually. So, for instance, if I want to move this ship, well, first things first. First, I, I need to turn him to the right. And when he's turned to the right, um, he can go ahead and basically do a different approach. In this case, I'm going to have him try to grapple. Uh, with this guy, I'm going to have him also try to grapple. I don't want to get knocked off. So, all of these guys are going for grapple. We're not going for um, any sort of ramming yet. We will go for ramming with these guys. Whether or not it's going to work, only time will tell. And with these guys, I'm also going to go for a ramming maneuver, primarily because the enemy is sort of uh, in a weird perpendicular state, and I'm hoping they're going to basically 
row themselves right into our ram. So let's see if it works, if my plan has succeeded. And remember, guys, you can control these ships individually. You don't have to control them the way I am by using only the commanders. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. And that's Ternopi. I think that could be Dani Lopez. Very good point. Right here, I'm already taking a nasty hit, and we survived that one. We're very lucky. Um, so now, of course, we are grappling with the enemy ship. Oh, could we get a slam here? Could we sink a ship? Maybe, guys. Here we go. Oh, well, we've grappled on. So, of course, we were going for the grapple and not the ram. And now it really just depends on how many men we have on board and how many men they have on board. As you can see, their Quinquedem has 28, whereas our um, Roman Quinquedem has 37. So we do outnumber them there. Uh, over here, you can also see quite a hell of a battle going on. A lot of the times, victory is as simple as trapping the enemy. As you can see, this ship right here, the Carthage Deck Tremem, Tremem, is going to go down very quickly. That being said, this ship is about to smash right into the side of our Queen Kadem here and could sink it. And if you guys take a look at the... If you guys take a quick look there at the, uh, the oars on this side, they're destroyed. So this ship is crippled. And that happens when two ships try to ram into each other, but they're both facing each other. Uh, so they don't, they don't end up hitting each other's sides. They actually end up hitting each other's oars. Um, what I'm going to try to do, unfortunately, that ship is crippled. I was going to go for a kill there. Uh, I think I'm just going to keep on moving forward. You can see some of the enemy ships got past us. No worries. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take control of these guys. And actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to back up. So let's see if we can do this. I want to move backwards a bit. love to ram here but I think we're gonna just have to move backwards and with this unit we'll move around yes oh definitely the ram ships and I'm really trying to get a ram ship here because I want everybody to see it I think this guy may be about to ram our ship we're about to find out Nope, we're fine, although we did capture an enemy ship. And as you can see, that can be represented by the fact there is now a red flag above it, um, denoting a Roman flag. Uh, over here, though, we're having an interesting situation. We're doing a really good job numbers-wise. You can see that the enemy is losing quite a lot of enemies to our missile fire. And quite frankly, I've mostly I've won most of my battles here not due to ramming, but due to trapping the enemy in such a situation that they get hit by missile fire. There we go, by the way. That's one of our ships down. I'm going to try to get a better view here. Um, and as you can see, it's going to take a while for it to sink, but there is a sinking animation. You can see it, you know, the ship uh, disappears slowly beneath Davy Jones' locker. And let's go ahead and see. All right, so um, we're asking to lower the volume some more, but we're really quite low at this point. Um, we're at like five. So I don't, I don't know how much lower we can get without turning off the volume entirely. All right, let's get back into the game. Let's see if that's better, guys. Now we're at two. Okay, so as you can see there, that ship is crippled. There is absolutely no moving with that ship at all. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move back here. See, the oars are destroyed. You could also probably imagine that for those oarmen, uh, generally slaves, I think if not always slaves, uh, just imagine having those oars broken. Remember, your body and your chest and your stomach is right up against the... Uh, one side of that oar. So if that oar breaks on the other side, there's going to be a lot of pressure on your side too. Probably broken ribs, probably dead sailors quite a few times. Just a dangerous, dangerous situation. Uh, I'm going to go ahead, back up. And as you can see, when you approach like this, sometimes you are forced to back up quite quickly um, to sort of get away from your own men. But one thing you need to keep in mind is you need to stay close to your commander. And if you get a little too far away from your commander like these enemy ships are here, you get cut off. At that point, obviously, things get a lot more difficult, and the whole goal of these ships is to get closer to their commanders um, to be able to, to get some, some support, basically. Let's move up here. So, so far, cut off, cut off. We've cut off a lot of the ships. We captured one. And when you capture a ship, well, you can use it against the enemy. Uh, most of the captured ships that I grab, I use for ramming, but it's really up to you. You know, there's no rules as to how you, you have to use your captured ships. I think in this case, I am going to try to grapple onto the enemy ship. So let me do this. 
It's going to take a while, probably two turns to get there. And I'll move this ship over this way with a ramming maneuver because I want to get him out of here. So let's do that and let's take a look here. All right, I'm going to try something. So I'm going to turn left and I'm going to try to grapple with this incoming ship. It looks like our guys have much more men on board than the enemy. But then again, a lot of the enemy ships sort of went right past us and they'll be back for more. So let's not get too complacent. Turn left, turn left, and I'm going to go this way. All right, let's end the turn. Keep it up, boys. Here we go, another captured enemy ship. So that's a good question. As far as I know, the capturing crew does not have to split to man the enemy ship. Um, I could be mistaken on that, and that's why we have the devs here. And there we go. The enemy just fouled our unit. So what's happened here is the enemy has managed to ram and actually knock our ship over, but they're now fouled, which means that their hull is stuck underneath our ship, and there's a chance that they will sink with our very own ship. Um, if that occurs, it's a very lucky win, although we probably would have beaten them anyway. As you can see, we've got them trapped between two ships here. We're hitting them consistently with ammo, uh, and I think we could probably knock them off pretty quickly. Yes, wind is absolutely present in some battles, as mentioned by uh, Fornrost, uh, Fornust, excuse me. Um, and the way that works, um, we were mentioning initially, I don't know if you guys were here, that uh, before b most battles, uh, most of the ships would cut off their masts, cut off their sails, toss them into the ocean, and, and fight with their oars. But I have seen some battles where the wind will actually appear up in this upper left corner, and it'll give you a direction of where the wind is coming from. And if you open your sails, you know, obviously... Um, and you're facing away from that direction, you're going to go a lot faster, and that's going to mean, you know, harder rams, uh, faster movement, etc. Uh, but of course, it can work against you too. Now, I'm going to try to ram this guy, and as you can see, I'm going forward a few turns because I want to increase my speed. I'm almost certain he's going to try to get out of the way before I manage to ram him, but I'm going to see if I can do anything at all to stop him because uh, I want to hit this guy. I don't want him running away. Let's see. Unfortunately, that boat is crippled. Now, this one is not. So I'm going to actually turn right. And unfortunately, we can't do any ramming, but what we can do is turn right and hopefully ram that ship next turn, especially while it's stuck there. Turn right here. So I'm kind of trying to get these ships away from each other, as you can see. I don't want everybody stuck together. Thank you, Musou. He's absolutely right. So, de depending on the kind of uh, battle you're doing, especially if it's a skirmish battle, you can just select everything. Heck, you could even have a battle like this one with no wind at all. Uh, perfect, you know, conditions for this kind of battle. So here we go. The cutoff enemies are returning uh, to try and get back to their commander. We may have captured the commander ship, if that's it. Uh, if not, we're looking for an enemy ship with a flag, in this case, a blue flag behind it. What I'm actually waiting to happen is I'm waiting for this fouled ship to sink because uh, I want to show you guys the sinking animation, which I really enjoy personally. Uh, for me, it's, it's something really, really cool. Oh, no. Fire arrows are still very, very... Um, I mean, it's, they're not in this battle as far as I can tell, but fire arrows are still very much uh, very important... Um, whether or not the enemy has masts or not. You're not just trying to set the masts on fire. I mean, these are wooden ships. So, uh, quite frankly, fire is going to be pretty dangerous to them no matter what you do. Um, in this case, you know, no, there is no fire in this battle as far as I know. I could be wrong. Uh, I'm going to try to actually rake oars with the enemy ship here. And I'm going to try to grapple with the other enemy ship. But we're going to have to turn around. In fact, we're going to have to turn left here and start heading down this way. And I want to go ahead and select grapple. And I hope we can grab onto the enemy Quinkadem. Hopefully, they're deciding to move right into that area. Uh, the rest of the time, we're basically just trying to find opportunities to smash into the existing ships. For instance, these ships that are cut off. I think I want to turn my guy this way um, and eventually try to ram into the side there. Now, some of our units are crippled, and they're just not going to move, unfortunately. Um, the only thing they can do is turn in this one area. You know, when all your oars are broken on one side like that, you're not going anywhere. Okay. 
Make sure this guy gets out of the way. Need you to back up a lot, buddy. Go for a attack here. And at least we've cut off a lot of the enemies. Okay, I really want to knock that ship down. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Let's see if we can get a slam here. I'm going to have to change the direction of this guy, but that's okay. Okay, we're going to ram on both sides. Come on. Oh, they went a completely different way. Did not expect that. Let's see if that foul ship is sinking yet. Not yet. I want to make sure we get a nice view of that sinking. A lot of the enemies that have been cut off are starting to return here. Surprisingly, in this battle, I must say, of all the battles I've done, this has probably had the least uh, ramming deaths. Because quite often in the initial stages of a battle, you will have quite a lot of ramming deaths. Uh, in this one, it looks like we've only had a, f a couple, which makes me happy. And it also looks like this enemy uh, Carthaginian Quinquidem that's knocked our ship down is about to lose its last sailor. Uh, so he's fouled, he's cut off, he's got no sailors left on board. This might not be such a good situation for the guy on this boat. So there we go, he is cut off. Um, I hope that our ship takes him down with it. And as you can see, the enemy still has some very powerful leadership ships here. I'm going to try to ram them, but easier said than done. Okay, let's do that. Got a few ships here that have been sunk. And these units are cut off. So they're going to try to make uh, for a leadership ship as quickly as possible. Basically, they're going to go at cruising speed uh, to our closest ship. And what's this? We can ram. Ooh, let's see if we can't ram the enemy here. Let's do that. With one of their own ships, mind you. Ah, uh, that's probably why they can't crash. They can't uh, sink other enemy ships with a crash. Nonetheless, I hope I startle the enemy crew here. A nice little boom. And there we go, guys. The sinking ship. Do you see that? Unfortunately, the enemy ship uh, did not go down with it. But It was fouled, but it did not go down with, uh, with our ship. Maybe this one will. And there you go, guys. Look at that. One of the enemy ships. A bunch of guys on board. Very little damage under the ship. Just sunk with the ship that it rammed. That's another danger of ramming, is you could actually end up ramming the enemy ship and getting stuck yourself. That's exactly what just happened. Beautiful, beautiful setup. Um, and now we've got this enemy ship trapped here, stuck and waiting for our sailors to arrive. Is it going to be a victory or not? Actually, we could start doing the bets if Musa wants to go for it. If you guys take a look up here, uh, right now it's actually 49% for us, 68% for the enemy. So the enemy is winning this battle. But one thing I've learned in Mari Nostrum is you cannot give up early. You just can't. You know, I've had battles where I was sure I was going to lose. And all of a sudden, I managed to get a few good rams, a few good attacks. I managed to capture some ships. Uh, and I won the battle. So you just cannot give up in this game. You've got to keep trying. Uh, I'm going to be sending a lot of guys around, as you can see here, for some ramming. Uh, as for this ship, I'd actually rather just keep him here. Uh, I almost want to grapple on the enemy ship. Of course, that's not an option. Oh, here it is. So we're going to go ahead, grapple onto the enemy ship, try to get on board. But to grapple properly, you need to be alongside the enemy ship. You can't just have your side um, on the front part of the ship. It doesn't work like that. Here we go. Keep it up, boys. Keep it up. As you can see, these two guys are grappled, and our men are jumping on board their ship. We have more men on this ship. So they're jumping on board here. They're grappled. And they just killed most of the men on board. There's still a few Carthaginians here fighting for their lives. But there we go. The ship is now ours. Ship captured. He was not fast enough, says Fornust. Absolutely right. Yeah, I wasn't fast enough to, um, to hit the guy, unfortunately.
This is actually... Is that Hannibal? Yes, it is. It's Hannibal. <laughs> okay. Now, of course, keep in mind, Hannibal was quite a common Carthaginian name, so it could be any number of Hannibals. But for the sake of this Let's Play, I'm going to assume that it's the Hannibal Hannibal. So we're going to go ahead and advance here, um, try to get a ram, because I think this ship's going to continue forward. And if I'm right, if I'm right about them continuing forward, taking out a leadership ship like this is going to hurt the enemy badly. Like, really badly. Um, we've got a lot of crippled ships here. There's nothing we can do there except basically use them to fire at the enemy. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Uh, and I'm going to send this rammer over here as well. But I really hope that these rammers ma manage to take out the enemy leadership boat here. Let's go for it. Come on, boys. Row, slaves, row. Here we go. We're hoping it doesn't turn towards us. That's, that's the goal here. We're hoping that it doesn't turn towards us and that it turns to go this way. There we go. And we're actually hoping for it to speed up a bit because at this point, we're just going to hit the front and that's not going to sink it. So as you can see, the ships are basically right up next to each other. It would be in our best interest at this point to try to grapple onto the ship and take out uh, Hannibal's boat. Uh, but I'm not sure if we can do it in this time period. Let's go ahead and take a look here. You can see we're chasing one of the enemy ships there. They're cut off, desperately trying to get back home. And right, right over here, we're having some more ore raking going on. Uh, but we have plenty more men than the enemy, and I think we're about to take over this ship pretty quickly. Keep it up, boys. Show no mercy to these Carthaginian dogs. All right. What to do, what to do. There's another enemy ship fouled. And sure enough, we've got that captured ship. This ship is tired. Yeah, unfortunately, we're going to have to make another turnaround if we want to jump on this ship. Um, so for now, it's really up to the Roman Quicurem back here um, to keep hitting the enemy. We could, of course, just sort of get around this way and just keep firing at the enemy with our, with our bows, which is probably a good idea. I mean, we've got three ships around the enemy, tremendous amount of men firing at them, throwing missiles down on uh, these guys. You can see they're down to 39. And you'll actually see the units on top of the ship flash a little bit when one of them goes down. Uh, right now, they're good going down pretty, pretty quickly. Um, here we go. We've got another enemy fouled, and one of our cutoff and one of our cutoff ships might be able to get a ram on the enemy ship. Here we go. Oh, oh, oh! No! So, unfortunately, with the cutoff ships, we have no control over them. Their main goal is to sail as close as they can to their leader, uh, which makes it very hard for them to suddenly slam into an enemy ship. I thought for sure we were going to slam into the side there. We would have gotten a nice ram and probably sunk the ship. But we'll have to just continue. How are we doing? Well, the enemy's still winning. That's, that's the truth. But if we zoom out here, uh, really zoom out, so we can go really far up, we can see that our ships seem to be in the, ma in the majority, actually. Um, and one of the ways we're going to be able to kill the enemy here, I believe, is basically just by shooting them down. Um, as for their command ship, it's taking a little longer than usual to take it out, but that kind of makes sense. But with this ship right here, the Roman Quinquidem, we've got them stuck. They're not moving anywhere. They're not going anywhere. Um, so one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to turn left here. I want it to reverse a bit. Let's hope that works to get them out of this pocket. Although some of these guys are doing just fine in this pocket. You know, some of them we want to keep here. All right. And over here, two of our ships, of course hit by the enemy there, getting some pretty good uh, attacks on our boys. There's been a lot of sinking deaths for our ships, uh, but our men are undoubtedly doing better than the Carthaginians, and we still outnumber them. It was rooting for the blue guys, the observer streams. And there we go, another ship there that hit our guy. Uh. 
Now, two of their ships are fouled, so we're actually kind of hoping that they're going to go down with our boys. That would save us a lot of time. But we've also got their command ship here, and killing it is a major, major goal of ours. There's no doubt about it. What to do, what to do. Hmm. I wonder if this will work. I don't think it will because, unfortunately, we've still got this ship trapped. But I was trying to see if we couldn't go ahead and ram. We might as well try. I don't think we can because this is a captured ship, but who knows? Faster, boys. Row faster. Um, so, Byron, that's what I was thinking initially, but I think the reason we can't is the captured ships, as far as I can tell, cannot go at cruise speed. Um, I could be wrong, but that's definitely an idea, if it was a possibility. Um, and the folks here from Ternopia might tell me it is here in a second. That would be excellent. And there we go. We just got half, so we did not get a ram at all. Uh, but we got our boys closer to the enemy ships, which we're trying to take out. So I guess that's, that's a good thing. And we still got these enemies fouled on our ship. So we really have to hope that they're going to go down with the boat itself. Yes, commanders definitely have a radius. That's a great question. And that's one of the reasons why it's so important to get stuff like cut off enemy ships and stuff, uh, etc. Because once you cut off an enemy ship, really the only thing that it's going to do is try to speed towards its commander. That's that's its only goal is forget, forget light living. You know, let's speed towards the commander. Uh, what I'm not understanding, and again, it's been uh, very recently since I started playing the ship, is the enemy is managing to ram our ships without getting any head start. Um, and maybe the devs could explain what's going on there. Uh, but basically, a lot of these ships that are now in the water, now sinking, um, the enemy never really got, you know, they were right, we were right up against each other. So unless the enemy had some sort of sappers get on the ship and take it out, uh, I'm not sure what they did. Because so most, most of the time you need to actually hit the ship in the side, um, right in the side, and then, of course, you beat it. So over here, we've destroyed all the enemies. Unfortunately, all our ships here are crippled. Uh, one thing we, we can do is get the ships that aren't crippled, sail the hell out of here. Um, let's hope that they don't smash themselves up on the way back. We'll keep moving around here. Ah, thanks, KT-8. So that could be it. Need to go a bit faster when trying to ram. So in other words, overextend myself. And when you go faster in this game, you can actually make your crew tired. Um, you, could, you can make your crew basically not go as fast just because you're overworking them. I mean, remember, these are slaves, the guys that are rowing. Um, so, you know, they, they also have a limit too. So there we go, we grappled on, on the ship. We should be taking over pretty easily here. Six men on board, it's gonna be an easy steal. Not to mention that our men are providing a lot of arrows here to assist us. Okay, that, that ship is cut off. So I'm going to move back here just because I want to ram next turn. Uh, so we'll move back a bit. Move back a bit here. Move back a bit here. Keep hitting it, boys. That is a command ship right there.
There we go. One ship going down to Davy Jones' locker, and the enemy did not get stuck. So that's unfortunate. The enemy did survive that. As you can see here, the enemy's tired, and that's probably from, you know, going so fast through the water, slamming our ships, etc. Um, they've definitely overextended uh, the, I guess you call it the comfort factor of the enemy uh, ship crew. And there we go, a tactical defeat. No! We did our best, of course. Um, we captured five enemy ships, but we really didn't sink many. We sunk one enemy ship. Uh, they sunk four of ours. And we're going to go ahead and take a different mission. So I've actually never tried the second Punic War missions. Uh, this one looks a little complicated. We could play as Carthage this time. So let's try the Battle of the Ebro River as the Carthaginians. Um, let's go ahead and do this. Find my command ship. So it looks like we're just now leaving this area. Let's do it. Of course, actually, my favorite campaign... I mean, there's so many campaigns here. Um, one of the... One of the campaigns I really love, personally, um, is the the actual campaign against the Persians. So it lets you play as the Greeks against the Persians, and you face so many Persian ships. I'm talking about, like, just a massive amount of Persian ships, and you've got to fight them yourself. There's also a campaign which pits the Athenians against the Spartans, which is quite fascinating um, and really, really cool stuff. Yes, you can absolutely, absolutely replay the last turn. That's that's definitely possible. Um, so somebody mentioned something about the commander. Um, if we take a look here at the commander ship, we'll wait until the actual uh, turn resolution is over here. In fact, we'll we'll fast forward a bit. Um, if we take a look at the commander ship, you guys, you see this uh, black circle around the commander ship. So all of the ships within this black circle are essentially under control of the commander. All, all our ships, of course. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Now, I'm going to try to go for a ram here. Um, and this time, what I'm going to do is exactly what was mentioned. I'm going to go at top speed here with the ram and hope that this works. Uh, it might not, but we'll never know if we don't try. So let's do that. With this unit, I'm just going to go ahead and move forward. Just get them a bit closer to the enemy. We're not necessarily going for a ram there. Let's end our turn. Come on, boys. Well, we might be the ones that end up getting rammed because we're going to turn here at the last second. Oh, here we go. Raking oars. So this is the most common occurrence. Is of course, two ships go past each other. Uh, it looks like the enemy is trying to grapple onto us. But, ooh, we did get a hit, but not enough to sink her. Um, and in fact, we trapped some of our ships here. Come on, come on, boys. When in doubt, ram, says do a barrel. <laughs> Indeed. Okay, right here, raking of the oars. And the enemy's grappled. So, we're going to do the same to them. If they want to grapple, we can grapple too. Uh, as for this, I'm going to go ahead and keep going with the ramming. Let's hope it works. I just want to get one ram kill here. And we are overworking the slaves just in an effort to ram here. You can also see that the grappling doesn't always work. So occasionally the grappling will fail. Uh, when that happens, it's a very sad day for, for the group that tried to, uh, to grapple, of course. You can see that this actual enemy ship got damaged pretty badly this roman ship got damaged on the right side it's not moving anywhere but these guys are awfully close to sinking one of our ships with a ram no you cannot ram your own ships you cannot ram your own ships at least i haven't rammed any of my own ships so far speaking for myself at least Now, one frustrating thing, but I mean, this is quite, you know, quite realistic. When 
you get your ships in a line like this and often certain naval commanders will decide to start their battles this way where basically one ship is you know right behind the other to get ships out of this pattern you could do one of two things so well i guess you could do sometimes you get the option to turn right or left i don't see that option here right now for instance if i do this that's not going to turn this ship right or left because it's still in the line so what you need to do is basically back out almost like a large group of trucks just slowly back out and leave the group of ships there and of course in your, if you're in a position like this where you can escape then you can just go ahead and pick a new course let's do that ramming let's see if we can get one come on i think he's going to turn a bit too fast we are going very fast rowing wise but if he stops or turns our way, we're not going to get that ram we were looking for. Oh, I think he's going to turn just in time. Maybe not. We might get our ram kill here, guys. Here we go. Oh, this would be an excellent, excellent ram if we do. Come on. Come on. Oh, we did not ram him hard enough, unfortunately. Uh, and this is a very heavy ship. So keep in mind, it's obviously easier to topple um, enemy ships that are a bit lighter. We did hit them with a lot of force and probably scared the hell out of the sailors on board, but we didn't ram it. Okay, got some nice grappled here. We've captured some ships. Well, they've captured us. And over here, the Romans are crushing us. Still trying to get that ram, but uh, it really is something that, you know, occurs sort of spur of the moment. You shouldn't, you know, the, the one reason we're trying to get a ram here is because I love the way it looks. But you really shouldn't base your strategy on ramming. Not at all. Uh, for instance, my strategy is to sort of trap the enemy ships, fire at them with arrows until they're all knocked down. Uh, my other strategy is to try and grapple the enemy ships or try and rip their oars off and just circle them until I've killed everybody on board. Uh, right now, as Carthage, we're playing a very tough battle. Let's go ahead and see if we can get one more chance at the ram. Unfortunately, we are not. We're going to turn. We might actually get rammed ourselves, but more than likely, we'll just rake oars. Ah, yes. Technically rammed, it just didn't sink it. Exactly. Well said. The ram succeeded, but it didn't knock the ship over. And especially, like, with a light ship like this, I think it's quite impossible for them to ram. This ship is about to get crushed by this big Roman ship. Just watch. Just watch. Oh, oh. Oh, wait. No. Wow. So, we grappled on. It wasn't actually sufficient to destroy it. We got very lucky there. Okay, guys. Well, guys, we're getting close to the end of the stream here. Um, what I'd like to give you guys an opportunity to do is to go ahead and talk with the developers here. Overwhelming defeat. Yeah, I had no chance there. Um, not even a little bit of a chance on that battle. Um, but the, de the developers are here in the chat, so if you have any questions, I'm going to leave it up to them uh, to answer them whether or not they want to or whether they want to make you wait. By the way, the Peloponnesian War, of course, Athens and Sparta, another really fun battle here. This is the first time I got a victory in the game. Uh, I actually managed to win with Sparta um, just basically by getting the ships grappled up, firing arrows, and killing everybody aboard. It was the first victory I got in the game. Uh, but even in that battle, I had no rams. I believe that was a ramless battle. Ramless battle indeed. Good question. And Damien paid for this stream, so he can certainly uh, ask it. Yes, we'll have a release stream in three days, so I want to improve my skills in three days. I want to get to the point where I am ramming enemies left and right. Then again, I might be ramming a bit too much. You know, towards the end there, I was trying to get every single one of my hits was an attempted ram. We really should have focused primarily on just winning the battle. Um, so 
you know, in three days on the release stream, I might not do much ramming. I might focus more on grappling. I might focus more on controlling the field, you know, separating the enemy from their commanders is another great way to win. Um, so we're going to have to figure it out. Uh, I already want more before it's released as Cable Nexus. Awesome. Some play-by-email games will do. Excellent. I'll have to face you, Fornost, or somebody else over at Ternopia. Uh, you or Dani Lopez. I would love to. Uh, I feel like playing Quadriga now for some reason. <laughs> so for those of you that don't know, uh, this is the same company, Ternopia, that created Quadriga. Uh, just an ex excellent, excellent game. These guys are really great at creating just very niche games uh, and games you can have a lot of fun with. Um, and Pixel is asking, Agrippa, will you ever stream uh, Simano? He's referring to Command. I would love to. I probably will one day. Uh, it's probably going to be shifting sands, um, but we'll have to wait and see. I, I really really have a lot to learn in command. I mean, if I have a lot to learn here in Mare Nostrum, uh, the, the amount I have to learn in, in command is is multiplied by hundreds. Let's take a look here. Hey, Adamon, how you doing, man? Yeah, first thing is avoiding friendly collisions. So, um, Hethwell, the, re the reason that's not always right, um, going directly at the enemy with a ram, is the enemy is consistently moving. So most of the times I've noticed if you want to ram an enemy, unless he's staying still, you need to sort of time your ram a bit ahead of the enemy movement, if that makes sense. So, you know, if the enemy is like, you know, let's say two tiles away from the ship, you might want to aim for that, or two tiles away from his target, you might want to aim for that center tile, because he's going to have to cross that center tile, and if you can cross it at the same time uh, and hit him in the side, you can knock his ship over. There we go, Musso will let you guys know, November the 2nd indeed. Well, anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the stream. I want to thank Damian Narushima for purchasing this stream. Remember, guys, we were going to do this stream only on the uh, on our actual release stream, but because of Damian, you guys here in the stream got to get a little bit of an early sneak peek. Um, there's going to be a lot more during the release stream, of course. Um, I do want to thank everybody for showing up, especially the Ternopia team. Thank you so much, guys, for showing up. Uh, I could definitely improve here in this game, uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed anyway, and thank you so much. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Cable Nexus. Uh, thanks to everyone. It was really, really fun. Um, and I hope to sink some more ships the next time I stream. All right, my friends, take care. Have an excellent, excellent day. And remember to be careful when ramming the enemy.